Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I'm reviewing uh, X Men Green. Uh, it's sort of called. I mean, it's not. It's called. It's X Men Unlimited Infinity Comic on Marvel Unlimited that you can get a free week trial uh, for, or otherwise it's uh, nine ninety five a month or some slightly cheaper price for a year. Um, X Men Unlimited launched, and the first uh, four issues were uh, Jonathan Hickman and Declan Shelby uh, did a a little story about um, Wolverine kind of rescuing people. He, uh, the Hickman made a bunch of comments about how he's going to use the format. In this case, it's the Webtoons kind of uh, vertical scrolling format to do some interesting things. And to be fair, I'm reading this on an iPad. It is it is interesting. It's different. Um, he takes good advantage of vertical space. So like characters that are falling, you get this this long vertical movement. And that's, that's kind of cool. Um, but uh, in terms of an actual reading experience, it's not pleasant to, to read. I mean, this is one of those things and... You know, having been in technology, there there becomes the answer of just because you can doesn't mean you should. And it this is this is where digital, I think, has failed for Marvel for a long time because they they want to do more with the platform than just tell the story. It's like, well, as long as we're on digital, we might as well do cool stuff with the panels and and make them move and animate and everything else. It's like, yeah, okay, but now it's not pleasant to actually read. And what I think manga has done, at least from a digital perspective, is that they worked harder on just converting the material to make it as easy to read as possible. And then once they had people comfortable with that, then they started bringing in the gimmicks and the tricks and, and kind of evolving that experience. But um, U.S. comics, for whatever reason, seem, and Marvel in particular, because they did this with the AR experience, you remember that from about, oh, 10 years ago now, um, they, they seem obsessed with like not being satisfied with just having a good readable comic. But anyway, enough... Um, enough of a sermon here. Uh, let's get into this. So this particular storyline starts in issue number five after Hickman's uh, run has completed. And uh, this is by Jerry Duggan, who's a current writer of X-Men, uh, penciled and inked by uh, Emilio Lasso and uh, coloring by R Rachel um, uh, Rosenberg. And Jordan White is our, is our editor here. Um, let me kind of summarize the entire story here. So, so basically, and we'll go into the details, uh, Nature Girl... Um, who was introduced, I believe, in Jason Aaron's run. Um, he, she uh, comes across a turtle that's choking on a bag, and she feels uh, compelled to do more. She's, she's fed up with uh, the humans who are killing the planet. So she travels to Las Vegas and does what any sensible person uh, would do. She murders the convenience store manager at the time with a pair of scissors to the neck uh, for poisoning the environment. She then enslaves a dog and... Uh, and kind of goes on a uh, you know murderous rampage, uh, of ultimately making her way to an oil refinery, uh, fighting Black Mamba, and um, uh, teaming up with uh, this this kind of newish character Curse. I think Curse has appeared before, but maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, and uh, ultimately, Sauron gets into the picture. Wolverine is tasked to go down and hunt her down, uh, but she murders a uh, a lot of people. Uh, she actually. Uh, shows up and uh, kills some people at a uh, at a refinery, and all the people she killed are, uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I don't want it to be about this, but it is. Everybody's a white dude that she kills, and they're all jerks. Like all of them are like into, you know, beating children, and they're all portrayed as awful people. When she shows up uh, first to kind of as the people who are working on the the pipeline. Um, they're like, they're talking about, uh, just doing nasty things and that, uh, they don't really care about, uh, people or anything. It's the villains are, are, um, comically bad. Um, so they, there's, uh, in the end, uh, the, well, well, we'll get there. So that's, that's the summary. And I won't tell you the end until we get to the end of this review. Um, so, uh, so some things that are, they're positive. The art is fine. Um, it's, it's rough like kind of all digital work, but the art is, is more or less okay. It's using the format nice. I think the coloring is, is pretty solid, actually better than a lot of uh, digital work. And uh, the, the penciling, I mean, they, they take some effort to put in some detail. What struck me here is that there's certainly panels that are just the character white background um, and everything else, but then you get other ones where uh, the character's like walking through Las Vegas and all the detail is there of the strip and animals attacking it and, and everything else. And it's some pretty good character work. I, I think the the art is uh, is solid for what it is. And, you know, knowing that this isn't probably the most funded uh, work and everything else, I mean, there, there'd be no, 
I mean, ultimately, if you're given the job to do a story about uh, Nature Girl going evil and murdering a bunch of humans uh, to save the planet, you're not going to put your best work into it. But there's there's a bunch of there's bears, there's dogs, there's wolves, there's a bunch of different kind of characters here, and they they pull it off pretty well. So that's that's nice. The story re relies on kind of one thing, and and this is where it doesn't work unless you can completely embrace this, and that is that. Uh, the humans who are destroying the planet uh, through oil and uh, and 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 throwing their trash in the sea and other things, those people are all morally and reprehensibly evil, and it is okay when they are murdered because they're bad. Um, if you can sign on to that, then this comic will read okay. But the comic really relies on this idea that that uh, oh maybe she's going a little bit too far, uh, maybe she's you know, uh, not doing quite the right things. And maybe she's, uh, you know, but she's justified a little bit because the planet is dying and the planet is dying quickly. And if we don't take drastic actions, then, you know, and then bad, then the planet's going to die. So therefore, what's a little murder? You, you kind of have to sign on to that concept because if you don't, the main character is absolutely a psychopath. And then as you're going through this, um, everybody else starts to seem stupid as well. Uh, there's a, a moment kind of in the middle of the comic where um, uh, this is after Nature Girl's killed the guy in uh, in Las Vegas. She's teamed up with this uh, this kind of newish mutant curse who's also bloodthirsty and just wants to kill people because it's super metal and cool. And uh, then she goes to this, this pipeline and starts murdering people there. And, you know, the second person she murders, well, it's not really clear. She it, she may murder several people in the second. The, the little girl who kind of follows her, girl, boy, I'm not sure the gender actually of curse. Um, I should, probably should, but I can't quite tell. Anyway, um, she uh, causes a, an oil worker to trip and crack his head open and, and bleed out on a rock where then nature girl takes one of her antlers and actually stabs the guy through the throat. I mean, slices his neck and I mean, maybe they, they rescued him, but probably not. And back on Krakoa, they're talking about this and Emma Frost gets served. Uh, this isn't how legal stuff works, but hey, I mean, why, why do any research when you're talking about saving the environment? The planet's more important than that, right? So uh, Emma gets served and she's like, oh my God, we're getting sued. And then Charles uh, Xavier and, and Magneto are like, this isn't good. We're trying to sell the humans drugs and, and this is a big distraction. We, we need to cut this stuff off. And it's, it's, it's a telling scene in the comic because obviously the story is about how Nature Girl is, is going to extreme methods to save the planet and uh, in theory is irredeemable, although the comic keeps wanting to push you into saying, well, maybe she's not that bad. But you get this first glimpse at uh, Xavier and Magneto and Emma we're basically like, man, this is an annoyance. We, we may get sued, and and then then we'd have to. This would be bad PR. I guess we gotta stop this uh, this girl from murdering people. It's it's it just you're you're not getting to a people are good, <laughs> like like it it's again it, this comic, and I'm being pretty generous here. Look, I, I aspects of this comic make you sick to read. I, I'm sorry. Um, even if you're extremely uh, for the environment, you want to protect the planet. Look, I, I would love it if there was better solar power, uh, wind, water. I, I, I'm all for investing in new technologies. I think that's great. I was taught at a young age not to throw your trash out the window. And if you're old enough, you might remember billboards as you were driving down the highway saying things like don't throw your trash outside. And and that and, and we were taught like you, you, you do protect the planet. You try and do your, your best by the planet. But this comic is uh, is sick in the sense that the characters and the way it's written is so extreme in in showing this. Uh, well, you know, there's maybe she's going a little bit too far. I mean, they introduce this curse character in who's kind of more psychopathic in this comic, uh, primarily to kind of counterbalance uh, Nature Girl to go. Well, you know, she's. She may be doing some extreme things, but look at this friend of hers. I mean, she's she's drawn to evil. That's she's even worse. It, it's 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 just it's um it's gross, honestly. Uh, when you when you read it, because it makes continual steps to want to make the case that hey, maybe these actions are a little extreme, but isn't the environment worth saving? And can't we kind of see a little bit of her point while she's you know, slicing open people's necks and, and murdering. And, and, uh, 
you know, and, and, and it's not an equivalency to say these oil workers, these, these, these people are killing the planet, thus, thus, therefore their life is forfeit. And by the way, uh, the fact that all the, you know, quote unquote bad guys, the, the, uh, the people who are making the pipeline and other things are portrayed like they are, um, uh, you know, the, the fact that they're, they're written so cartoonishly evil. Um, again, it's, you know, it's, it's some, pro, some, some nice peaceful protesters who are, uh, you know, a couple of them are wearing masks again, and they're, you know, they have no pipeline signs and peace line signs and save our water. They're all portrayed. Their, their, their dialogue is, we respectfully ask you to stop, stop poisoning us. And then of course the, uh, the uh, pipeline workers immediately like stand up and start pushing and punching them and hitting them with wrenches, which, uh, again, n not, not how it goes. But uh, the, the protesters are all portrayed as, as kind of older, peaceful people. And the, uh, the people who are working the pipeline, again, all portrayed as white, 100% uh, white, 100% male, and 100% evil. They're just going to beat people to death. And so, you know, with this, we get bonuses for breaking hippie skulls, these kinds of lines. And, and so it's, it's conducted that way. So you're supposed to look at this and go, well... I'm kind of forgetting the fact that these uh, these two kids are murdering uh, the people who are they're opposed to, and that's it's blatantly dishonest of a comic and a story, and unfortunately, it's sabotage. I mean, again, you read this and either you're sick and you're like, yeah, yeah, I wish I had Nature Girl's powers. I'd go murder a bunch of uh, refinery workers too, um, or you look at this and go, oh my god, th these people are insane. And that's, that's kind of where you land. Um, the comic, to spoil it here, at the end, uh, they do get captured by Wolverine. They, they ultimately, they, they come across Black Mamba. Black Mamba is the, the hired villain for hire to, for the oil refinery. And you know, at various times, she as well, they, they make a point in the dialogue to say, I'm evil and I just care about money, but I just do that because I can't afford rent because of stupid capitalism. I can't, I can't afford basic things. And it's, it's really these, uh, these dudes fault that, uh, that hired me. I'm just a, a hired gun. I don't want to fight kids and everything else. I mean, she's a, a villain, but even there we're portraying, uh, black Mamba as a sympathetic, I mean, sympathetic character, all these characters, except for the refinery workers, except for a convenience store owner that for some reason, a bag in Las Vegas wound up in Krakoa lodged in a turtle's throat. That's those people are all irredeemably, terribly evil, deserve to die. Uh, but everybody else is fine. Sauron comes into the picture because the, uh, the, his lab is getting destroyed by the pipeline. And so here's a character who at various times have tried to murder all humans and They've made a point of saying, I don't want to cure cancer. I just want to turn people into dinosaurs. Um, he is shown as sympathetic uh, with his line of like, I want to save the planet. I mean, it's bizarre how this all goes. Eventually, the uh, nature girl and curse are captured. They're given a trial at Krakoa and um, they're found guilty um, of, because, of course, the, the rule was you, you're not supposed to murder um, you know, humans and they, they murdered a ton and, uh, you know, and everything else. And again, um, the, you know, the comic goes over and over Emma, none of us are happy with this outcome, Douglas. However, if we do not account for the toll put on the humans, then we invite further violence. And I don't think that's what will be to Kirkoan's liking either. Again, she's murdered several people, murdered them. Um, and so they give a trial, but before they send her down into the hole, Basically, uh, Krakoa, the island, says uh, Krakoa doesn't agree with the decision that uh, the the island needs to you know respect the planet. But eventually submits, and they do send Nature Girl and and uh, and Curse down into this this Krakoan prison. However, just as they get down there, they're met by Doug, who informs them that Krakoa is going to you know basically parole them because Krakoa is still sympathetic to their plan. And so Doug uh, uh, shows that Krakoa has given them some special weapons to, to, you know, basically some gifts and sends them off into the world. It looks like they head off to Madripoor. They arrange uh, Pyro. Again, this is Pyro who, you know, also right now in the X-Men universe is shown as, a, a, well, maybe not, not this Pyro, but, but basically has been <laughs> part of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, burned 
uh, Moira alive in a different life. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's, he's a happy guitar playing, you know, kind of hippie on the island and he helps nature girl and curse escape. Um, she's got a whole dark new look to her and, uh, now Krakoan weaponry that the island has given her and they're sent off to, uh, go kick some ass. And, uh, their, their mission is to save the planet, uh, at any cost. And, uh, we get a scene of Krakoa, the island smiling as uh, she goes off and a promise that X-Men green will return. Um, so maybe it will, maybe it won't. Um, who knows, but I, I will say th this, this comic is deeply disturbing in the sense that as it's being written, as it's being played out, um, I understand the goal of the writer. The goal of the writer was to say what happens when somebody's super committed and they do a, a they attempt toward the end of the comic to basically state some of the motivation, which was nature girl went to Araku, Mars and the planet didn't, it was unnatural to, she was allergic to it. And so therefore she realized this is the only planet she has earth. It's the only planet that she's going to get. And so she feels compelled. I've got to save it. I feel imperative to save it. Um, the problem is you, you, you know, the, the writer treats you like an idiot because you've got Krakoa here with now super technology. They're able to terraform planets. Um, you've got plenty of ways you can help the planet. Um, you could, you know, there, there's just, we've got some of the smartest minds to build machines that would help power the planet. We can build drugs and, and medicines out of plants. Uh, we can have storm come in and help cure the planet. Literally you have the ability peacefully to actually help the planet. But, uh, this comic tells you the only way that's going to happen is if, you know, one by one, we get a, uh, a kid and her sidekick to go and murder people. Um, the people who are, uh, refinery workers, again, are the evilest villain of them all. I, I remind you, we've got Black Mamba, we've got Sauron, we've got, uh, you know, those, those villains that, that show up in this comic, they are shown as uh, sympathetic that they have other things going on. I mean, poor Black Mama just needs to pay her rent and it's just so expensive because of capitalism. And Sauron is just trying to make his lab to turn people into dinosaurs. But, you know, he keep the, the, the evil refinery workers, the pipeline workers keep messing up his lab. And so the only villains in this comic, according to the writer, are, are those workers and they must be murdered and murdered brutally. I mean, we get shots of nature girl blood all over her face because it's sprayed at her as she stabs somebody in the neck with her horn. That's what this comic tells you. And the, the conclusion, the moral of this story is, you know, Hey, uh, the, the only reason why they found her guilty, they didn't want to is because, uh, you know, they, they were going to get sued and it was a bad PR and then they feel bad about it. I mean, we get, everybody gives a little speech about how much they don't want to do this. They don't want to, to punish nature girl. And then the, the island and Doug are like, and we're not going to punish you. And we're going to go ahead and let, let, you know, send you off. You've murdered several people, but you know, the, the planet does need saving. So, you know, go out in there and kill more of the people. Just, uh, I think uh, Doug tells her, just be smarter about it. In other words, cover your tracks better. Don't, don't murder somebody in a convenience store and then stand around in their blood waiting for the police to arrive. You got to get in and out quickly. And to help you do that, we're going to give you some, some weapons. Uh, in order to help you, you do this. So it, it's, it's a sick book. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, the message is, is gross and it's, uh, I, I, again, I, the, the fascination with writers right now is to allow some, some sympathy that these characters have to, you know, they, they, there has to be a, a reason for their actions. And even the villains, there's, they're not really truly villains. There's, there's some sympathy for it. And what, what we see here is, you know, when we have to land on a true irredeemable, awful villain, Who's it going to be? Oh, it's a guy working the pipeline who, you know, at a moment's notice is going to just go grab a wrench and start, you know, pounding away on an old man who's just there to protest for clean drinking water. And I think that worldview, looking at the world through that lens, uh, terrifies me, to be honest. I, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's horrifying. Anyway, X-Men Green will return. It's what they promise us. Um, you can go check it out for yourself on Marvel Unlimited. Uh, as I said, you get a week's free trial. So as long as you're quick about it, you can uh, get in, get out without paying anything. Um, I should probably do a video on Marvel Unlimited in general and, and what it provides and kind of everything that uh, that goes along there. Um, hey, if you want Jeff the Landshark, there's 11 issues of that that uh, you can read. But uh, let me know what you think. 
if you read this um, comic and and what you think about all this. I'm 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 surprised. Uh, I shouldn't be, but I'm I'm surprised. This comic is probably the most cleanest, clearest example of uh, a massive disconnect between uh, the writing and 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 uh, and you know since <laughs> just rationality. Uh, pretty nuts. Pretty pretty honestly pretty nuts. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for listening.